you know, just it's a nail biter. Uh, we had two solo homers, obviously, and tied that thing up. And, um, you know, Christian Franklin has really been struggling at the play. We've all been talking to him and trying to motivate and pump him up and he hadn't gone crazy. And that at bat he had with two outs. And uh, I don't know how many pitches he saw, but he ended up drawing a walk. And that that got it going. And, uh, you know, I don't know how it went down from there. Maybe a, another walk, pitch and change. And then a walk to uh, Opa, who already had a 2-0 count on him. And then obviously the wild pitch. Uh, you know, I think Charlie knew that he just threw a wild pitch. He was probably going to get him a fastball, and he got it right down central, and he hit it as hard as you could hit it. And uh, that's the loudest I've ever heard this this stadium. And I've been in some crazy games here, but that was incredibly loud. And uh, but obviously, what a what a clutch performance by Kevin Copps. That I mean, he just kept fighting us, and uh, felt like he got better as the game went on. And coach would talk to him pretty much every inning, and down in the tunnel, they would discuss it. Uh, we thought we were going to let him go to the seventh. He wouldn't let us take him out. He had a quick inning, goes back in the eighth. We were like, okay, we're going to take him out, and I'll we'll probably bring Wicklander in for the ninth. Scored runs. Kevin said, I'm going back out. And, uh, you know, what a what an incredible, incredible college pitcher. All right. Let me know if you've got questions in the chat. Tom Murphy, lead us off. Um. Dave, with uh, bringing Welch off the bench in this game, did you just have a sense that maybe a moment like that would come along for him tonight? Well, you know, we I've been kind of just trying to figure out the lineup, you know. Didn't, you know, you put your hitters in there, and I had Charlie in there yesterday with, you know, it didn't go real well. Slavin's not hitting right now. Franklin's not, wasn't seeing it very good, and that's the middle of our order. And I just, I just told the coaches this morning that I was going to go with the guys that helped us win some big games as far as the lineup. Uh, I brought up the Tennessee game with Gregory hitting in the nine hole. He got the big hit, you know, at Tennessee. And, you know, just, uh, just said, I'm going to bring Charlie off the bench. You know, I, I, I'm going to have a guy off the bench because I, I felt like Nebraska was going to just keep matching up after, you know, you know, Povich was out of there because we knew that he was starting. We knew last night after the game that's who they were going to start. And we figured they were going to let him go until he showed him he couldn't go anymore. And he did a nice job early. I mean, he, he stuck it to us. Um, but it was hard for me not to put Charlie in there against that left-handed pitcher. But I just felt like we were going to get a shot later in the game if we could keep it close. I mean, our plan was Wiggins to go three to four. It didn't quite work out. Kevin, give us what he's got. Hopefully we could keep it close. We didn't know what the score was going to be, and then we were going to try to finish with a couple of guys. And, and uh, you know, Wicklander wanted the ball. He told us he wanted the ball, and he was one of them. And, you know, Charlie just – I came down. I, when they brought the lefty in with a 2-0 count, they turned Casey around to right-handed. I, I went down the steps, and I said, Charlie, if, he, if, if Casey gets on, you're hit. And uh, a couple pitch later, he was, he was there, and he was ready to go. And uh, – Laid off a bad pitch, and then you saw what he did to that pitch. I mean, he, he hit it as hard as you can hit it. And, yeah. And just so, yeah, I felt, like, I felt like he was going to get a, a chance to pitch it tonight. Did I know that was going to happen? Obviously not. And just one more from me. What was Povich doing to keep you guys off stride? And then how big was the, the Opitz home run uh, to, to break that spell and then, and then the more yeah. home run? Yeah, really good question. So he was busting our right-handers in, and we knew that. Uh, but he threw, but he was pitching away a little more than we, we thought he was. And he was spinning the breaking ball and he was getting ahead of every hitter. I mean, it was like, you know, you feel like if you're hitting and you make the first out on the first pitch, it starts to get frustrating for everybody around, but he was getting ahead of us one or Oh one Oh two and one, two. And, and he had some quick innings. Um, I don't know, you know, and then with Opitz, I mean, obviously, Casey has one home run going into the game. We've seen Casey hit a bunch of balls out of here. Um, but I haven't seen him go down and hit a line drive right-handed that hard. I mean, he went down and smoked that ball into the green seats over the bullpen on the line. It, it lit our dugout up because all of a sudden, man, we're only down one run. And kind of for our dugout, what's new? We're always down one run in the middle of the game. And so it was kind of like normal territory. And we felt like the momentum switched over to our dugout a little bit. and. 
Kevin kept throwing up zeros, man, and that's that's what did it. We just we knew we were going to break it, break out, and uh, Kevin gave us that opportunity. Bob, you know, Dave, nobody's on two outs. Looks like it's going to go the ninth tied. And, um, just what do you think about the way you guys just rallied uh, the way the way y'all did in that inning? I mean, that's the way it happens sometimes. You you think, you know, because I've been on the other end of that. You're thinking, man, I got two quick outs. I got a hitter down one, two, and I'm already over there thinking about, you know, how I'm going to score in the ninth inning or whatever the situation is. Next thing you know, Franklin's fouling off pitch after pitch after swinging and missing a lot, being super frustrated. And, you know, he got to 2-2. He fouled one off his foot. And then it went to 3-2. I don't know if he fouled another one off. He ended up taking a walk. Man, it pumped our dugout up. And just that he had a good at bat. I mean, we didn't know we were to score four runs. We were just hoping to score one, you know, hoping somebody would hit ball in the gap. And uh, and then sure enough, you know, uh, I don't know, I guess Robert walked and then Opitz went 2-0 and then, you know, the fireworks started. And uh, it was it was amazing. And this is yet another, you know, if you look at playing Nebraska, it took two out of three, so it's like another week weekend series win for you. I mean, they just – Obviously, this is the biggest one of the year. Just what, what do you think about that? You guys haven't lost a series in two years. It's unbelievable, honestly. And I told the team they were amazing. And, uh, you know, they, they just keep finding a way and they keep fighting. And we get to hang out at least another week. And we know that we're going to play North Carolina State. And they're, they're probably the, one of the most offensive teams in the country. And they're hot. And we, we figured that's who was going to win that regional. We, we all pro- projected it. And Kevin, 190, 185 pitch. You know I'm lousy at math, but Andrew helped me with that. So, I mean, what do you think about that? Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty incredible. Um, you know, he's. I did a little research on some of this stuff, and uh, you know, I looked at Florida's reliever in eighteen, had thirty seven appearances. I think Kevin has thirty one now. Uh, Kevin has more innings, but. It, I kind of comparing him to that a little bit. The difference is Kevin's 24. That individual is 21. And, you know, I've talked with coach about it, you know, just making sure we're doing the right thing. And Kevin's like, you're doing the right thing. I'm fine. Give me the ball. He's got a great arm action, short, quick, strike throwing machine. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, the kid's a warrior. He wouldn't let us take him out of the game. And, yeah, I know that we have the final call there. Uh, but it's, man, this is a team. And uh, they just, they just, they want Kevin on the mound. Kevin wants to be on the mound. I'm going to have a couple more, but I'll turn it back to Kyle. Thanks, Dave. Let me know if you've got questions in the chat. Nate. Yeah, Dave, especially after the three errors last night, how big was the defense uh, tonight? I mean, they made all the plays. It was, you know, we got a lot of ground balls, especially when Kevin came in there. I mean, they had a couple fly balls the outfield and, you know, they, they hit two or three balls that were hit pretty good. One of them was right back at Kevin that he fielded, like, off his glove and his, maybe his chest. Uh, but but they made all the plays. You know, Battles had some really nice plays on some slow rollers and choppers. And the grass is kind of wet from the rain today, and it started coming up there. And uh, I just really liked the way the infielders attacked the baseball and uh, and really, really handled it. And uh, obviously not giving them any extra bats. Was was big in us winning the ball game. Thank you, Hutch. Dave Franklin had the big catch on Friday, and he made another one today. Right when cops came in, what, what did you see on his play to end the third? And, and what, what can you say about his defense out there in center? Yeah. Well, I, I, what I see is he's not taking his at bats to the field, and uh, he's frustrated uh, big time, obviously. But he goes out there and he plays a professional center field and does his job and makes play after play. I mean, he's been, he's been as good in center field as anybody we've ever had here. If you look at all the highlight catches, I mean, it's been amazing. He goes back and gets it. He comes and gets, he goes side to side. And, uh, you know, he, you know, in game one, he saved at least two runs. We'd have been down five to nothing after three. And and he saved that. And we came back and scored a bunch of runs. And, and, and tonight, you know, that ball gets down. You never know what's going to happen there, but uh, what a great defender. And the comparison that I've seen a lot of people making is, is Charlie Boyce and what he did in 2004 with, to Kevin Copps. Do those guys compare at all? You know, this is the craziest thing. 
And uh, when Kevin got here, I gave him Charlie Boyce's number. So there's your story. And because Charlie Boyce was very intelligent, right-handed pitcher, um, and Kevin's the same way. And that's kind of what I do sometimes. And, you know, I didn't know Kevin was going to jump his velocity up in the, in the, in the nineties. Um, cause he didn't do it really until the last couple of years, but yeah, that, I've thought about it a lot and I've thought about this regional a lot and how I took a little bit of crap for pitching Charlie, but Charlie was in the same mold. He's like, I'd start walking down to talk to him and he'd point at me and say, I'm not coming out. And it was almost the same feeling. Only Kevin's too polite to do that. And he just would tell coach, I feel great. I'm not coming out. I'm good. I'm good. And, uh, but yeah, I, I do. I've thought about that many a time over the last few days. Let me know if you've got more in the chat, Bob. Dave, I haven't been able to add it up, but I know a lot of every year, including this year, a lot of home teams lose their regionals. It's just, just baseball, like you say, a lot of times. And um, Nebraska made it tough on you guys. Just how good do you feel? I know a lot of people assume, well, Arkansas is going to win at home, you know, yeah. but you can't assume stuff, obviously. But just how good do you feel to survive, especially Nebraska seemed like a better seed than should have been sent here, you know, frankly. I agree. Uh and when I saw them pop up, I thought, why are they sending the Big Ten champion here? It, it doesn't make any sense when you look around and you see some other regionals where the Power Five is a number one and they don't have another Power Five school in the regional and they might have been a seven or an eight seed or a nine, whatever. So I know, I know it's a really tough job and, and, and I get that. But Nebraska has a really good team. Um, you know, they played kind of a regional format most of the season. And they've gone on the road, stayed in hotels. They played two games a day. They played two different teams. And I think that they came in here and they were a little bit comfortable, more comfortable than I wanted them to be because, trust me, I was very much leery of them and what they could do here. And I knew they had good arms. Um, they've had, I mean, and I looked at the numbers. Um, I, I knew it was going to be hard to get by them. I knew it was going to be hard to get by them on Saturday. And then yesterday, obviously, they did a great job against us. We didn't play very well. And tonight, I knew it was going to be a dogfight, and it was. And, you know, you're down to nothing, and the game's, you know, moving on. But how, what was the mindset like in the dugout? We were just trying to stay calm um, because we felt like that we were one big inning away. And I think we ended up scoring that run in the fifth, and, and we knew that's kind of the halfway point or getting close. And, you know, Casey led that inning off and he popped that homer. I just feel like that the guys, man, that energy level went up. And, and uh, I think Nebraska probably thought, wow, here, you know, this is going to be tough to hold this. We've got to score. They've got Kevin Copps on the mound. And maybe they start pressing at the plate a little bit. I mean, it's just a lot that works in the mind right there. And, um, you know, it was, it was just uh, – it was huge for us to score in the fifth. I just got one more. Obviously, you want to win, but I know Will Bolt's one of your guys. Done a hell of a job. Just, yep. I guess, how do you, you know, feel for him? I feel bad, you know, and I say this all the time. You know, I don't, I don't get any, I don't get anything out of beating or winning against uh, former coaches that have worked for me or with me, and I don't get anything out of beating a, a former player. I mean, I don't, I don't, I feel bad for them. I mean, they had their huddle and right field in, in our stadium after winning the big 10 championship uh, picked like six in the league. And they ran away with it because they're better than everybody else and they're tougher than everybody else. And I saw that this weekend and that's, that's because of the players that are over there and Will Bolt and his coaching staff have instilled that into those kids. And, you know, Nebraska was really good to me and I loved it up there. And it was hard to come here because of what was going on there, but I knew that this is what I wanted to do. I don't like playing Nebraska. I don't even want to schedule. Okay. Th th thanks, Dave. Th Dave th yep. Think, think about if you ever gave me a number, what it would be. I'd, li I'd like to know. It would be double zero. I can tell you that. <laughs> All right. What's up? Thanks, Coach. Kevin, what were your expectations coming in today? How many – did you have an idea of how many pitches you had in your arm left or, or what was your mindset? Um, I didn't really have an idea of 
Sorry. How many I had left? Um, I started warming up in the ninth yesterday. I felt really good, so I kind of had an idea that I'd be feeling pretty good. Um, I had a conversation with Coach Hobbs um, before the game, asking me how many innings I could give him. I said three, and then I said, we always say a number, and it's usually more, so I was kind of expecting to be expecting it to be more. And then how are you feeling out there on the mound? Did fatigue ever set in at all, or did or do you feel fine? No, I feel fine. I didn't really feel fatigued. Um, I didn't really have too many, like, high-intensity pitches, I would say. I mean, I was I was going after pretty well, but I would say when I'm closing short and stance, I give that little bit of extra. I was just more focusing on hitting spots today. Nate? Yeah, just what were the conversations like anytime they ask and you are you ready to come out or do you feel you can go another inning? He just he just asked me how I'm feeling if I'm good to go and I just say yeah and I, I, I do feel good. I don't get sore or anything. You never never at all felt you needed to come out that you just felt felt good the whole time? No, even the more I throw the better I feel usually. Thank you. All right, let me know if you got more questions in the chat. Bob? Yeah, Kevin, playing off that, it looked like you got better as the game went on. Did, did you feel that way? Yeah, I did for sure. That's usually what happens if you look at my outings, um, especially on when we, we don't have trackman during the uh, playoffs. But when I get my trackman reports, my stuff usually starts getting better the, the more I throw and it starts throwing harder and more too. I think I got this right. I think you were on the mound when Franklin made both those great catches against NGIT and then tonight. Um, what, 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 just what do you think of those plays and what, what kind of center fielder he is? I mean, he's so good, you just kind of expect him to, but I definitely owe him like a steak dinner or something. And then, you, you, you know, Arkansas hadn't lost a weekend series in two years, and I consider this a weekend series because you beat Nebraska two out of three. You've been a big part of that this year, a huge part of it. Just what do you think about that streak you guys have been able to put together? Uh, I think it just says a lot about the program and player development and just everything about the program, just like you need all parts from <clears throat> development, um, the training room, the weight room, everything needs to kind of be clicking and going well for you to continue to win those series. That's got one more. Dave said they were planning to put Wicklander in the ninth, and after they got the lead, you said, I'm going back out. I, what, was, what was the mindset there? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just felt good, excited about the game, ready to finish it. And, uh, I think they, they trust me, and I was just ready to go. Actually, I got one more. Yeah, I'm sure you didn't want to have to pitch beyond the ninth. How good was it to see, or, you know, those four runs go up in the eighth? What you think of that rally? Because there's two outs and Franklin's down one, two. It ain't looking real good, you know. I mean, that was huge. That was a, that, it's so relieving when we score runs. And then when Charlie came up and just blasted that ball over the seats, just it really, it really takes all the momentum into our dugout and helps me to settle down on the mound more and just get into an even better rhythm. Thank you. Hayden. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, I was just going to ask about the dugout. As soon as Welch crushes that ball on TV, it looked like Van Horn and you guys were going nuts. Just kind of <laughs> that moment when you realize you got some run support and how you guys react. I mean, we, we were waiting for it all game and like we knew it was coming. And just, I mean, I always feel good when Welch steps in the box and he has a tough role coming in in those big situations and he, he just always gets it done. It's amazing. And you just have so much confidence with that. Yeah, Charlie, congrats. Can you uh, take us through that at-bat and what you hit and what, were you looking for a certain pitch in a certain spot or just kind of, kind of tell us what happened there? Uh, I was looking for a fastball to hit the whole at-bat. He went ball one, and then he bounced the one, obviously, that got to the backstop, but in Franklin's score, and I thought since it had been 11 balls in a row, Coach Van Horn was going to give me the take sign, so I kind of looked at him and asked him, do I have the green light, and he nodded his head, and I got what I was looking for, fastball right in the middle, so... <laughs> Hit it pretty well. Yeah, just how, how'd that feel? Because, you know, with Kevin on the mound, you got to feel like that's, you know, game, set, match there. Yeah, anytime anytime Kevin gets in the mound, we know as a as a unit, offensive group, that if we can get a lead, then there's a, a really, really good shot that we're going to win that game. So, you know, as soon as he gets in the mound, it definitely gives us a, a boost in the box. And then, I mean, three runs against Kevin Cobb is just not going to happen. <laughs> And, and then just how does it feel to be headed to the Super Regional? It's unbelievable. I mean, 
I came here as my first year here. It's my first regional, and, and now we're making it to the Supers. So it's great. I mean, just, just truly blessed and, and thankful to be here. So I just got one more. You know, Kevin, he, you know, he might come in in the sixth or seventh or whatever, you know, coming in and the, in the, really with no outs in the third. Um, what did you think of his performance? And you guys, you know, were down, but, but you rallied. Uh, yeah, no, it was lights out. I mean, to throw the amount of pitches that he threw today, um, the efficiency and, and just getting quick outs and, and strikeouts and, and throwing up zeros at the end of the day is it's good work. I mean, it speaks for itself, I'd say. Thank you. Nate? You had, uh, Charlie, you had been DHing. Did, how did you take it today when you knew you were going to have to come off the bench? And you almost feel it looked like you're more comfortable pinch hitting than, than, than DHing. Um, I definitely feel the same in the box, you know, regardless of, of the situation. Um, I wasn't upset. I knew that they were going to throw a lefty at some point out of the pen because they have like eight of them. So I'd be coming in and I needed to be ready for that mentally. And yesterday was the past and we needed to win today. So anything I could do to help the team win. Thank you. All right. Let me know if you got more questions in the chat. Hutch. Charlie, when the wild pitch brought in the, the go-ahead run there, did that take any pressure off of you during your at-bat? Uh, I mean, I I wouldn't say it took pressure off of me. I felt like I, I knew what he was going to attack me with. I knew if he threw it in the zone, I was going to hit it hard. I'd already seen him on Friday. I knew what he had to offer, so not necessarily, but it definitely was great to have him lead at that point, no doubt. And, and Coach Van Horn was telling us earlier that when you hit that home run, that was the loudest he's ever heard this stadium. He's been here a while. Uh, what was it like going around the bases after you hit that? I mean, you can you can feel it like on your body. It's so loud. You're you're shaking. Like your helmet is it's rattling. Like it was loud. I mean, I've I've never really experienced anything like that. So it was, it was surreal.